Will you, will you pray with me while we prepare for the Lord's Supper? Father, I, I praise you for the day that you have given us. Lord, I pray, Father, as we spend time now remembering and proclaiming what our Savior Jesus did on the cross. Lord, I pray that you are glorified in your church here in Tempe, Arizona. May you have all the glory that is due you. We pray this in the beautiful name of our Savior Jesus. Amen. If you need a Bible, there are men that can put one in your hand. We'll be opening God's word as we prepare for the Lord's Supper. Just raise your hands and they will put a Bible into your hands. And when you have your Bible in your hand, will you open your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 5? For me, this is one of my favorite chapters. I realize when you say favorite, that should mean one, but I do have many favorites, and this is truly one of my favorites. In this short chapter, 21 verses, we could understand the gospel, we could understand what Jesus accomplished, and we know what will happen in the heart of the one that has been saved from sin. So read with me 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. For the love of Christ controls us. Having concluded this, that one died for all, therefore all died. And he died for all so that they who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and rose again on their behalf. I want to explain these two verses in four parts. And, and as you look there in verse 14, and I'll call it 14a, it says, for the love of Christ controls us. That the love of Christ that controls us, his love compels us. Simply understood, it is because of what Christ has done, the Christian is motivated to action. In, in those few short words, it uses the words us, and, and that means us who believe. That is us, Christians. In the second part of verse 14, it says that one died for all, therefore all died. That one died is, is Jesus. Jesus is the perfect sacrifice. He is God. He is the substitutionary atonement. He is the one that substituted his life that we may live. And you see that in, in verse 4 there in that section that one died for all, that for all needs to be understood. That for is for the benefit of. It is in place of, on behalf of. That three-letter word is very important. That one died for all, therefore all died. That all died is referring back to the us, the Christian, the believer. Because what Christ has done, the believer has died to sin. You don't need to go there, but remember Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ I no longer live, but he lives in me. The believer has died in Christ. Verse 15, and he died for all. 
that he died again is Jesus' substitutionary death. It was the benefit for those that believe. In 15b, so that they who might no longer live for themselves. This talks about the heart change that happens when a Christian has been saved. Christians don't live for themselves. They're no longer a slave to sin. You have been freed in Christ. Because of what Jesus, our Savior, has done, we are compelled. The Christian is motivated to live for him. So, believer, as you prepare for the Lord's Supper, think about what Christ has done. Ponder what you are compelled by. If you're here this morning in your own testimony, you would say that you are not a Christian. Please just let the elements pass you by. Communion is a time in the service that is for remembering and proclaiming what Jesus has done. It's a time reserved for those that believe. When you receive the elements and you're ready, take them on your own, and I will return and we'll spend some time in prayer. Men, will you please come serve us?